welcome to the podcast. I'm so glad you're joining me today. What I want to talk about today is you and Fido and the law. Now, you don't need to be a lawyer to own a dog. I mean, I'm not a lawyer either, but it's good to be able to do some research to discover the laws or the ordinances that are within your city or your county that may affect you and Fido. Uh, Being a dog owner, it's just good to know before I became a dog owner, I didn't know that there were so many ordinances over the many years uh, that I've been a professional dog walker and pet sitter. I do look up those ordinances. I do tend to know them. They're easier to find on the internet right now, but you can uh, get in touch with your county whether it be the animal control, sometimes it's the health department that takes care of what those ordinances are. And also know that the city may have ordinances or laws, the county may have ordinances or laws, as may your state. So there may be three different sets of laws. They may be the same. They may be different than one another. But it's good to know. It's it's just good to know what may or may not affect you. First and foremost is getting a dog license. Now, getting a dog license essentially means that your city knows that your dog has been vaccinated for rabies. And that usually, the rabies shot usually happens at about, oh, four to five months of age, then usually a year, and then they get boosters in most areas about every three years. You fill out a piece of paper, you pay your fee with the city, and then they give you a tag that you attach to Fido's collar. And some states, some cities will let you know when it needs to be renewed. Sometimes it's yearly. And with the three years rabies laws, sometimes it is every three years. And also there are some cities and counties that are requiring that your dog be vaccinated for even more than the rabies vaccine. There's parvo, there's distemper, there's a number of types of vaccinations that your city uh, or county may require. You can look for low-cost clinics. You may be able to find them. That would also, you can easily find through a Google search too. Some cities and counties are requiring, unless you have a special license, that you must spay or neuter your dog. That I didn't know. I just thought that it was what you did when you went to the animal shelter and you'd adopted a dog that was spay or neutered before you brought it home. And that is to help control the overpopulation. And unless you have a breeder's license, then you can't breed your dog. And I guess with the over pet overpopulation, then that is, that's understandable. And a next ordinance that most people probably do know about is uh, taking care of your dog's business, picking up their poop. Like humans, like everything, we poop. We do. And it's a fact of life. But most cities, most counties have an ordinance that if you're out walking your dog, you need to be carrying a bag and pick it up. I know I live in an area with an open space and I, I'm just so happy when I see pet owners and clean up after their dogs. It's a good thing. And if you don't and you get caught, there can be there can be a fine that's associated with that. And of course, leash laws. Leash laws are a fact of life that if you're out walking your dog, if you have Fido out with you, they need to be on a leash. I know it was it was earlier this month that I was out walking my dogs and somebody was out walking their dog without a leash and they became aggressive towards my dog. And if your dog's on a leash and you're following that ordinance, then hopefully you can control your dog and there will be nothing more than a little bit of barking and we're on our way. But if your dog's not on a leash, then there can be that trouble. Now, typically a leash law requires dogs to be leashed and under the control of their owner when they're out walking. Now, of course, if you're at the at the dog park, then there is that area where the dogs can be unleashed and they don't like you having the leash on when they're in the dog park. And noise ordinances. There are noise ordinances that apply to your dog. We've all heard that dog that is outside, that it's barking its head off, it, it's late at night. And in my area, for me, I 
I know that there are Norris ordinances from like 10 p.m. till 7 a.m. And I try to be a good neighbor that if I come home late, I put the dog out. I try not to let them bark. And then I bring them straight in. And for my neighbors, I I let them have like 10 minutes of bark. I can put up with 10 minutes of barking. And beyond that, I I think that that is excessive. And I think that is what my ordinance says is that more than 10 minutes of constant barking is too much. Some areas, it may be 20 minutes. And that's why it's good when you look up any kind of ordinances that evolve or involve your FIDO that what that limit is. Because you want to be able to resolve any barking disputes with your neighbors if you can. My dogs, I put them out at 7 a.m. When I first got up, was getting ready for work, put them out, took my shower, brought them in. Well, they might have been barking for five or 10 minutes. And I had a neighbor who had just usually gotten home from work. They slept days. They worked the night shift. They came by and said, hey, your dogs are barking too much. And I was like, okay. So it's best to just talk with your neighbors if you can. Let them know what the problem is. Are they barking forever? Uh, Because like I said, for me, 10 minutes, that's it. And I bring in my dogs. I... And that was okay with my neighbor who came over 10 minutes at 7 a.m. and about 3 p.m. because I worked from 7 to 3 and then around dinner time. And they were okay with that. They knew that at 7 a.m. they'd be out for like five minutes. It's normal. And I'd try not to have them bark, but they're dogs. Dogs bark. And the neighbor was reasonable and we were able to work something out to where he could come home from his job and get the rest that he needed from working nights. And I could let Fido out and let them do their thing in the morning, let them out in the backyard, and not have to police them the whole time, all the time. And so barking dogs can just be a real, a real difficult experience. If you truly cannot talk to your neighbor, you may have to turn to your animal control and talk with them about what can be done. What can they do to help you? Especially in this day and age, you don't know what you don't know about your neighbor. And so, you know, it's best to proceed with caution. Some counties have limits on how many dogs and cats you can have. I know in my particular area, you can have no more than four. And that is no more than total. (laughs) And so if you have three dogs and one cat, you're at your max. If you have four dogs, if you have two and two, you're at your max. You know what that is. It it is really just to keep the animal hoarders or the people who, you know, collect animals beyond what they can, what their ability is to provide for those pets and keep up with their needs. So know what those rules are. And uh That animal hoarding brings us into what are the rules of preventing animal cruelty? Having too many pets in one house, it is cruel. They don't get the attention they need. They don't get some, maybe sometimes the food or the cleanliness that they need. There's many reasons why having too many pets is cruelty. There's many definitions of cruelty and there's many different ways of cruelty. And that is something that, again, your county may have an ordinance for or not, but may be worth a talk with your animal control. And last but not least, rules about dogs and vehicles. Now, I had a great talk with Eve two episodes ago about, and we got into dogs and hot cars and how she has her dog with her all the time. But in her particular vehicle, she has an air conditioner that works with the engine off and there are good Samaritan laws and there's many steps that you have to do before you would be able to break a window. Because for me, I didn't know that you might have the air conditioners running and Fido is just fine. The windows are up and it's 101 degrees. There are those scenarios. So it's good to know what your ordinances are and maybe what your state law is regarding having dogs and vehicles in hot weather. So just a real short episode on some of the law regarding you and your Fido. And I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you've enjoyed this episode, if you enjoy 
Wag Woof Love, I'll let your friends know. Please subscribe so that you can get a notification whenever a new one is released. I would appreciate that. Tell your friends. And if you have any questions or comments, you know you can go to the Wag Woof Love website and use the comment form and I read everything. And if you have a question, sometimes I'm able to talk about those, answer those questions on the show for you. So take care. Ta-ta for now.